Hello everyone. Welcome to my studio, my brand new studio. It's Lorette, the Vintage Paper Girl. I'm so thrilled you're all here with me today. And I want to welcome you to all my brand new subscribers and to the ladies who came on board the very, very first day. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Lynn's Altered Arts, La La Gamma, Susie Sage Jensen, and of course, Miss Gail Agostinelli. Hi. Hi, sweetie. So anyway, welcome everyone. And today we are going to do a little making of some much needed ephemera as well as some pieces that um, I need for several journals. I, I'm working on a couple of journals at a time, like pretty much everyone else does. And so I need to get those done. So, um, well, actually, um, I know you heard me say my brand new studio. So I, if those of you who have watched my video, um, the first two videos were done in my um, sewing studio. And uh, I now have a brand new paper studio. And I have my filming arm and all my goodies. And um, so I'm filming for the very first time. You can see this mat's very different. Um, in my new studio. And um, I'm so excited to be here. I started out in this tiny little 8x8 room and then I went to the guest room, long story, but um, through a whole bunch of moving around and playing, I, I just found out that what I was doing wasn't working. So um, I completely redid it, brought in this big, beautiful uh, 40 by 70 inch wood table and put my my cubbies that hold all of my work into it. So, or not my work, but my ephemera and my beads and you know, lace. Okay, any, all that good stuff. So anyway, um, now I'm gonna be filming in here. I have a new filming arm. It's a different room, different light, different everything. The negative to this room is even though I have everything right in front of me that I could possibly ever want, uh, it's all the way around me and, and right in front of me. The bad part is it's in the front of the house which is the noisier part of the house because it's right on the street and already when I tried to when I filmed this video on the first video for us on Saturday there was a COVID birthday party which means everyone drove by and honked and blew horns and screamed and yelled and then the fire truck came and I had just started filming turned that off started over and we had technical difficulties, so I lost a full hour <laughs> of craft with me video. So I was not a very happy camper. But as Gail told me, who is my mentor and my buddy and my best friend and my sissy, um, she told me that it's all part of being a YouTuber and that, you know, it just happens. There's a lot of work behind the scenes and we have boo-boo. So I lost a video and... I'm gonna redo as much of it as I can. So you'll see some finished things because I did them in that video and then I'm just gonna finish up here today. Hopefully this won't be too long a video, um, but I, you know, you never know with me, I'm so chatty. Who knows what we're gonna get. So I wanted to show you a couple of pictures of my, well, I can't show you the whole studio because I can't do it with the camera, but this is um, a picture of the table I brought in and the cubbies, now that table goes all the way to the edge, both sides. And I brought in a set of cubicles from Target. Well, I already had them in the room, but I put them up on the table. There's some storage below, file cabinet and some, you know, papers and things. And so the things that I use the most are right here in front of me and also right around me. So it's very easy for me to craft, although I'm only 5'1". So if I'm at this table here with my chair, I have to really stretch to get to these, like right up to my tiptoes. <laughs> or I have to get on a stool if I want to go to the you know, to the top of the shelf. Excuse my voice this morning. It's very raspy. It's allergy season and I do have asthma. So it doesn't always stay nice and light and bright. It gets really froggy, especially in the morning. And it's pretty early for me and it's very foggy out today. It's California fog. Isn't it lovely? So um, this is also a little bit of a close up of my happy place. This is what I'm looking at. And my filming arm is actually right here and connected. So it's coming down over my head. Um, so you kind of get a good idea of where I am, what I'm talking to you, and what I'm doing. Now, I don't know where this is on my mat. This is a new setup, so I hope you'll bear with me. I hope this video comes out and we get to release it today because, um, you know, I'm not sure. My husband's playing with this and we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully you'll 
bear with us and our goofiness and, you know, help us get through this. So anyway, that's the studio that I'm in and I'm really excited about it. I love it so much. I enjoy crafting in here every day or as many days as I can. So anyway, today we're going to have an ephemera, which is craft and chat with me because I always am so darn chatty and have like a million stories and I promise you'll be entertained, although I don't know if you'll enjoy everything I have to say. So we'll see. But anyway, um, like I said, I don't know my working area, so let's give it a shot. I'll try to sit back and not stick my head in there <laughs> or anything else. I shouldn't be there. So anyway, today uh, we're going to work on some of my butterflies, and I call them mine because um, this is something I came up with. Although doubling a butterfly is not new by any means. Everybody does it. Uh, the ladies out there in the graphic design world there, or the designers, of course, have made many of them have double sh uh, size butterflies so that you can stack your butterflies. So to be, for example, this one's right here. This one is a uh, Jewel Design. Jolene created these for me. Well, and for all of you, but for me specifically, because I asked for some little pink butterflies since I work a lot in pink. Uh, and here is her little, her little, um, so you can see there are a variety of sizes that you can stack one on the other. I think I have, yep, there's three sizes here. So if I want a 3D butterfly, I can stack them all up. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. So, and then I could just, you know, bend the wings a bit and get, get myself, I don't know if you could see that, some dimension. Okay. So, uh, and then she has them in two different styles and designs. So, and of course I've already made a few. I have a lovely little dish of a few lovely, uh, beautiful, little, delicate butterflies that I use. This is, sits on my desk all the time, and as I make them, I throw them in there. And then I was getting low. Um, I need to do um, a gifting swap of some of my butterflies, so I um, have to get some more made. And I need some for my current journal. I don't have any that, you know, really go specifically with it. So I thought I would work on those today and bring you along. I've already done some of them for you, but I've been asked a number of times on uh, the Facebook group, a couple of the groups, and on Instagram, how I make these. Now, you do not need this exact these exact punches. These are two totally different punches. They are not the same one. This is a Martha Stewart butterfly punch. It is out of production. Um, I actually got this on eBay. I paid a fantastic amount of money for it but I'm gonna say it is well well worth it because I use them all the time like all the time I use them just as tiny little butterflies or I use them as a set this is a completely different butterfly that I got from EK tools um, and uh, as you can see I have I have them in every color these are my pinks and anytime I have a tiny little scrap I grab my little Martha Stewart butterfly and I make myself some butterflies so uh, I have them in pink and I have them in blue and I have them in beige and, you know, whatever color. I, I have them in purple, reds. I have them red and green for Christmas, both in the large and the small. So I use these all the time. So that's my big project for today is I've got to get these done. They have already been cut and inked and punched and these already have their pearls and their little bit of bling. I don't know, you know, if you could see those very well. I'm not sure on the focus, but we'll try this. And then there's this with the pearls. This just got the plain. This has them already. I did some stamping on these. I actually stamped a whole big paper and then cut myself some butterflies and flowers and circles and squares. And that's a really good way to get some bases. So these are those. And I'm going to actually put them into my little, my pretty little dish here. Yeah, I um, you can see I did this one. It's just in um, that. Let's see, what else do I have in here? Oh, I did some little green ones. Aren't those pretty? And they're just slightly, slightly inked. They're kind of a tough one to ink, but they're, you know, they're not that bad. So I, I don't, I didn't mind it too much. I do them while I'm watching TV. Oh, here's a blue one, you know. So I, oh, there's another one. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, so here we go. Let's get these all. Oh, they're so pretty. I love them. Look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm not really sure what you guys can see. So we'll, we'll get this. Just be patient. I promise we'll fix it. This is like a, a lot of hard work. 
I never knew how much, but it is so rewarding. So it's okay. I don't mind. It's it's actually hard play. <laughs> I don't consider this work. I consider this my work play or play work or whatever you want to call it. So anyway, let's get busy. I need to get these done. So I have my art glitter glue, which I prefer for this. It's quick drying, and I mean quick. So when you put it down, boy, you're... Oh, whoops. Hmm. Got so excited, I forgot what I was doing. Okay, let me... I'm using these uh, dry handy wipes. I dry them out and then I um, I use them to mop up. I also use the wet ones for, you know, when I get glue and stuff. And um, those work pretty good. And I gotta tell you a funny story. When I first started this crafting, this uh, paper crafting, I have a garbage can that's right next to my desk. And it's about desk height. And, it's in a, and there's a little plastic dish on top. And I was putting my little wet wipes out there to dry every day right and all of a sudden I come in one morning and I have no dry wipes and I'm like where are my dry wipes what the heck so I do some more and they disappear again so I asked my husband honey where is my he says oh I thought they were trash I was being helpful I threw them away we've had that little problem with paper scraps and envelopes because he thinks I've left things out and into the trash they go so Mr. Helpful has had to I've had to <clears throat> train him in the ways of paper, and now he asks me before he throws anything away or at all, do you want this? Do you need this? Is this for you? <laughs> so, <laughs> sweet guy that he is. Alrighty, so the first thing I do with these little butterflies is I take my little pokey tool and I wrap it around with my finger, one behind and one over the top, and I give it a little bend or curl, okay, just to get I want some dimension in these. I don't want them to be just flat. I also kind of bend the body. Now it's not going to stay like this, but what it does is it breaks down the fibers in the paper and gives it some movement. So we're going to do the same. I'm just going to go around here. I'm pretty, I do this all the time. Made 20 of them yesterday. So there you go. Okay. So that one is ready to be glued. So <clears throat> I'm going to go through and do that to each and every one. You have to be careful because some of these papers, <laughs> depending upon the quality of your printing paper or your cardstock. Now these are, some of these are on presentation paper. <coughs> Sorry, my throat. And some of them are on um, 32 pound copy paper and bright white so that I get a good print. This right here is cardstock. This is parchment cardstock that I have inked and I almost forgot. I need to bend those because I won't get the movement I want. Okay. And they're going to get flattened out. I mean, they lay in this dish, but believe it or not, they will respond to that fairly quickly um, if I need to, you know, touch them up. All right. So let's do this. I'm going to concentrate for just a minute here. I get lazy. <laughs> Sometimes I overbend them, but that's okay because they truly just flatten right back out. <laughs> These darn glasses that I have, they're readers, and I need them to work. Or I can't see what I'm doing, but they fall down a lot. So you'll see me push them up my nose probably at least 100 times for this video. Okay. Let's go like this. All right, now, one more. I just picked a few to do with you guys. You could kind of watch me, because I could have finished these last night, really, I could have, but I really thought, for those of you who are interested in this, want to know how to do it, I hope you're watching, I hope you found me. Um, you know, because, but if you ask me again on a one of the groups, one of the Facebook groups, then I'll be able to direct you over to this video and say, go over there and see how I made those. Somebody wanted me to do a private one on a message, and I said, uh, no. <laughs> I don't have time to do that. Plus, I wasn't real great at it either. Boy, my throat's gravelly today. Sorry, ladies. Sorry, sorry. It's that time of year. Oh, my goodness. California, spring. Yay. Aren't we lucky? I shouldn't complain. We don't have bad weather. Although we need more rain. Oh my gosh, we've got to have more rain. But what are you going to do? Okay. Try to center these a little bit. 
you know, kind of up from the top and bottom. I don't want them going over. And then see, I've left them so they can be bent. Just put it in the middle. You could, of course, if you don't want to mention, you don't have to do any of this. You can just get double butterflies and they're still just as pretty. Come on now. Here I'm bragging about how fast this glue is. Ha! Huh. Not so much today. Of course, it's cold this morning, and I noticed my glue reacts to the weather. Doesn't want to come out of the bottle, and you know, all that fun stuff. I washed the little head the other day, and oh my gosh, I got such a fountain after that. And I noticed other people said that. So, what I did is I just released the cap, it took the pressure out of it, and it stopped being Mount Vesuvius there. No more volcano. Glue volcano. I should call that a glue volcano. So no more glue volcano. I did the same thing with my Fabri-Tac. I just released the lid and, you know, took out the pressure. That's kind of like with soda. You notice how your soda will um, bubble up and you release the lid? Well, you got to do it carefully because I don't really know if there's enough pressure. <laughs> but we keep right on the going and you get the whole thing on you. All right. Now, you guys know I love my pearls. So... I've got my pearls out. I did do a few with the rhinestones. Aren't those pretty? I love my bling. Anybody that's known me a long time that's watching, many of my family or friends knows, my, my other business name was Button, Bows, and Bling because I love buttons, bows, and bling. So that was always a, a perfect name for me. But in this world, I just didn't think it, I mean, it fit. I could have used it, but I, I really like Vintage Paper Girl. Because I'm into vintage and retro, and I guess I could have called myself the retro paper girl, but I think I'm very vintagey personally, but, you know. Wow, I sound like a frog today, ladies. I hope it doesn't sound like that on camera. Jeez Louise, I sound like a gravelly old man who's been smoking for 100 years, 10 packs a day. Okay. So, this is the tedious part, and this... Oh, excuse me, zippy zippy part. This is a pair of scissors that I use specifically for. I don't hope I'm in camera, ladies. I don't know. New worries. <laughs> New worries. Uh, this stuff is super duper sticky. It, it doesn't want to come off my hand if I'm not careful. Gosh. I don't know what I was saying. Oh, I love these little scissors. These were my mom's. I have several pair of them. Every time I use them, I think about her. She was an awesome seamstress, master crafter. Oh my goodness, that lady, boy, she was very successful at her crafting career. All of her life did craft shows. I think she started doing them in the 70s. I used to do them with her. And I even had my own table. So I would set up right next to her and we'd craft, we'd go do the craft shows. We'd get up the crack of dawn and sit in the dark, waiting in line to be let in, and then we'd hurry and hustle to get everything out on the tables before the crowds came in, and we'd work hard on our feet all day and talk nonstop and go home exhausted and happy and hopefully richer. But anyway, she was successful right up till she passed away. My mom passed away from breast cancer at 73, so her life was cut short, but she did a lot in her lifetime, and she was very, very successful and very creative. Oh my goodness. You will hear some funny stories as time goes on. Some of the crazy things that she created or did or but she is my inspiration my my long time you know inspiration she was my first introduction to everything so <clears throat> that's crafty or sewing or fabric or you know anything like that all right so there we go oops darn it i missed one i'm sitting back from the table trying not to stick my head in so i can't see all that well <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do well i'm gonna have to get used to it my goodness. Okay. I miss pearls. Oh, that not happen. No, no, no. All righty. There we are. Okay, hopefully I got them all. So, those are my beautiful little butterflies. Um, I say mine because this is my combination and how I do it, but you're all welcome to do them for yourselves. There we go. Nice little beautiful bowl of butterflies to be used in my projects. I'm going to leave it on my table because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using it. All right, so now for the project, the big project that I was working on when I lost my video. <laughs> 
these. Uh -uh, what can I know? There we are. Our little lace snippets. And they are lace and fabric heart snippets. These were inspired by uh, Tina over at Shabby Dabby Doodah. She um, is my inspiration for these. She did a video on them a couple of days ago. So if you go over and look, you will. What happened to what went in the middle of this? I don't think it was that. Okay. Did that just like run off my desk? Oh my goodness. Well, I'll go as far as I can on this one, and then, where did it go? Hmm. Uh-oh. I had something sitting right here, and this lace was supposed to go behind it. You know, I moved this desk around so many times trying to get ready. Bear with me a second. Alrighty, what was in the middle that went away? I don't remember. I should have took a picture. You know, darn it. I don't think it was this. I know this one goes in the middle of that. So, um, I picked out that and I picked out what was going in the middle. And I know it wasn't. I don't think it was this white flower. That just doesn't. I guess it could be it. It must be it. It must be. All right. I'm having a brain fade. Sorry, ladies. I actually didn't sleep at all last night. So I was up the whole night. I, I had a migraine early in the evening and um, took my meds, but they tend to keep me awake all night. So guess what? I didn't get any sleep. So I'm trying to do this on zero brain power. Well, we'll see what happens. All right. So what Miss Tina did is she got a uh, uh, some paper and, I mean, not some paper. Here we go. See? Some fabric and some lace and a heart. I'll explain those in a minute. So what she did, she got fabric lace, and she had cut out hearts from uh, some kit that she had had for a long time, and she had never used it. It was kind of one of her use it or lose it things. And so I didn't have any hearts, but I did just buy, prior to um, seeing Tina's video, I did buy a brand new heart punch from uh, Recollections over at uh, Michael's. And so what I did is I took some of my embossed papers that I had, because I had them in, I, I made a bunch of embossed papers. These are the 3D embossed papers. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh my gosh. By Tim Holtz. And so what I did is I cut out a bunch of embossed papers to use on something. And then when I saw Tina's video, I went, oh, I could do that. Those would work. And so um, I, I got my new punch and I punched out all these lovely um, hearts he just does I know he doesn't personally make these but you know what I mean his designs are just amazing I love this and the, the texture front and back look at that it's just gorgeous it's just gorgeous and I used a couple this was uh, I don't know what like a floor and then this one was a floral so I cut those out and I was going you know, to use to use. See, this is what it looks like all inked up. It's not lovely. Okay. And then I also, she stamped on a bunch of plain ones. So I did the same thing. I, I did some stamps. I can't really see it on the pink, but it's there. So I did a bunch of those. And then I got uh, happy with my new punch and I cut out some um, vintage book paper. This is all from Tim Holtz packaging and also some coffee dyed paper. So Oh, and I did some blue ones, and um, although I will say, watch out when you cut with the blue ones because they're heavily embossed, and boy, they fell apart. But I'm still going to find a way to use them. So, here we go with those. Let's put those away. I don't need all these right now. I just thought I'd show you what was new. Put them back in a, get in a, in a little box. Alrighty, come on now. Don't work when you're tired. <laughs> But it's either do it now or I'm never going to get it done because, like I was saying about this room, we have garbage on Monday morning, the street sweeper comes on Tuesday, Wednesday's the gardeners and water delivery, Thursday's gardeners and water delivery, and maybe I could film on Friday if I'm really lucky, so here I am today. All right, I need to get with it here. I don't want a long video. So here are the lace and heart snippets that I did get done. 
I did finish a few. They were on camera. They're now off camera. So here's the elements that we use. We use fabric, a piece of lace, a heart, and then your, your focal point, whatever that's going to be. So, and it's just done with glue. You could sew these if you would like. It's up to you. I didn't do that. These are for a journal that I am working on right here. And this journal, which I talked about in the other video, this is the hard part because I now won't remember what I said and what I didn't say and what I was important. So I'm working on uh, this dreams, uh, this little journal inspired by Gail Augustinelli. I, Augustinelli. I was doing this with her on her channel right along with her and making some progress was really excited and happy and then I realized I didn't have a cover so what was I going to do so I ended up having to stop work on some other projects and now I'm back so I need to get this done so I'm working on on pieces for this oh, I love petting it it's so pretty it needs more lace and some other things um, but I started it I'm working on the cover I need to work on the cover but I made these for this little journal and so I wanted to show you, look at that. Isn't that lovely? I hope you can see this. One of the problems with our last issue was it kept zooming out. So you wouldn't, everything looked about this big on camera for you guys. So you can see what these are going to be. These are going to either be a corner piece or a bottom. And it could be a tuck to stick in a card or a piece of paper. You know, you could just like slide something in under here as a little tuck. You could make it. A pocket but I think it might be kind of a small pocket I'm not real sure this could go down the side as a decoration so I did make these for this journal these are done and ready to go and then I'm working on some black ones for this journal I started this one quite a while ago. This actually was inspired by Amy over at Crafty Cat uh, by her, I think it was her color challenge. She picked a different color. I don't know if it was every day or once a week. I don't remember. It was over a year ago. So she did her color challenge and one of them was black and white. And I love black and white. It's the main color in a lot of my, in my sewing room, my craft room, uh, black and white damask and the walls are a nice icy blue and then touches up uh, blush pink. So those are my colors for my studio and my, my craft room. So anyway, I made this uh, TN and I started it. I am working on it. It's together. I've made a lot of the ephemera. I just I just started putting it in. I'm not done. I have to finish some pieces. So I thought maybe, now that one's not going to go. It's got too much pink. But it will, well, if I add pink to the journal, it will go perfectly. Because this is a French piece. Um, and this is a French journal. As you can see, it's all kinds of black and white beautiful. So... I did make this for this and these two pieces also they may or may not go in here but if not they'll get sold later so those are my inspiration for those pieces and these are just you know little bits of of goodies this is some retro and vintage fabric uh, because I work in these colors so I figure they're they're fine to make and, and have in my stash to use later so we got those done and let's see so I thought I would just go ahead and do two with you here and then we'll move right along. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get out that um, fabric, fabric tack. I'm going to turn it upside down for a minute so I can get it to come out because you know how stubborn that stuff is. It is very slow going. It's supposed to be. It was actually, um, I don't know if you guys know the history behind that product. It was actually designed for seamstresses. Um, it's been around for a very long time. So we could put in zippers, hems, um, the ladies who do costuming use this a lot they when especially when they're standing on the the side of the stage and their actress goes oh no I ripped my 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 zipper my hem she gets out her fabric fix puts it on hopefully the actress gets through her scene and then comes back and the seamstress will fix it so it's used by costumers and and courtiers uh, seamstresses all the time so it really isn't meant for paper. Uh, I mean, it wasn't designed for paper, I should say, um, because it's very slow, very thick. It, it's not great for gluing like a lot of stuff. It's very slow. It's meant to be thick. It's supposed to be super duper thick, so it'll grab on and hold. And you can sew through it. It will it will goop up your machine, but it won't ruin it because it was designed to work with your sewing machine. So anyway, that's a little history on that product. Um, I know people worry about it a lot. It does have acetone, or I mean, excuse me, acetate in it. 
which isn't great for me, especially with my asthma. But I do use it. I've always used it, so I'm not about to stop now. Okay, so another thing I'd love to share with you guys is this little spatula. It's silicone. I saw it on Maggie White's channel. She uses this to push down her, her glue, hot and um, fabric fix. It doesn't stick to it, comes right off, so it's great, but it doesn't burn your fingers, and you don't end up with a lot of acetate on your, I mean, um, fabric fix on your nails, because it takes off your nail polish, and ugh, it's hard to get off just in general. So I use this little spatula, and I got it at the Dollar Tree. Gosh, super great for a buck. I mean, I bought a couple. I figure if I ruin it, no big deal. And the lids that go on here are also the um, that rubber stuff, so it um, comes off real easy. And it's nice and soft. It's not a hard cap, so it, it really allows it to, you know, go on and off easy and not dry out your glue. Because these things didn't come with lids. I don't know why they sell you sugar. These Sugar Bell bottles are sold without a lid. Crazy, right? You would think. But nope. All right. <clears throat> this is just a piece of Tim Holtz packaging. I cut a heart out of it. And I purposely left it jagged. And I wanted it to be kind of rough and tumble. And then... Um, no, I want to put a little... I want to put some lace in the middle of this. I think I'm just going to kind of cut it... Around, sort of around. Because I don't, <clears throat> I don't think I want it square. I don't think that would work. Boy, we're crafting now. I don't have to push up the sleeves today. I have on three-quarter length sleeves today, so I don't have to push the sleeves up. I, I want to keep pushing them up just because it's a habit, but um, I'm going to ink this up just a little. It's a little too creamy white for me, so let me do that. Get down there. i got to leave that on its side or I'm going to never get it out of the bottle. It takes an hour. It's like a snail. Snail glue. All right, so what I'm going to do with this, and I'm probably going to get this on my hands because I need to scrunch it. I just need to. So I did put some hand lotion on first. It does help make this not stick to your hands so bad. Um, I heard that from another um, creator, another crafter. She said to put hand lotion on first. Ha, oh, brilliant woman. I don't remember who it was. I'd love to tell the whole world, but I don't remember whose channel I saw it on. Honestly, when I first started, I must have watched 200 YouTube craft videos, especially journaling and ephemera making, uh, all of that, um, collage. So I, it's really hard for me to remember who said what and where. If it's recent, I can tell you, but if it's not. Yeah, I did want the bright white because there is white on here, um, but I will <laughs> kind of give her a little, just a hint, I mean, just the barest hint of, because there's just, you know, there's always leftover ink on your, on your dauber. Um, and I think I talked about this before. I know Gail has, but this dauber uh, was made by Shell and Clint at the Ramblin' Crafter. Clint does the work, actually. It's Shell's uh, channel, or their channel. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure it's both their channels. <laughs> anyway, so I have them for, as I told you before, for different colors. But this one I talked about before, it is made from cedar, but this was a special custom made one. It was, as I won it in one of their contests and I was so thrilled and, and I think Clint was happy too because he knows how much I use it and love it and, and cherish it. And then this one I had already bought. I bought two others and then I went and bought one for my daughter who also has arthritis in her hands. So I'll always give them a shameless plug because they're my buddies and you know, I want them to do well. And Clint does these by hand, so. Wow, what a beautiful piece of artwork. No two are ever the same, ever, ever, ever. You, He cannot recreate one. Um, and it, he uses different woods, and, and because he's doing it by hand, by hand, it is actual art. It's just stunning. So if you get one of these, cherish it. Go over to their shop. If they don't have any, message them on Etsy and ask them if they can make you one, if they have time or what the wait list is. <laughs> With all of us promoting him, they probably have a long one. Clint ended up having a pretty good accident with a saw, so I think he's back to work from what I understand. I hope he is. I believe he is. I haven't had a chance to chat with them. I've been trying to launch this channel, but I will. So let me oh, glue this 
on here before I completely forget. It is going to stick up. There is some bulk, but you know, so far my journals are all soft mouth and they round nicely and they have some good, you know, heft to them. So it's okay. If I were put, if I were doing an altered book journal, I absolutely would not, would not, would not, would not, you know, put these in there. I see these pearls. These aren't real milk homemade. Jeez. I don't even know where I bought these at. I think I might have gotten them at um, Joann's. They have a little section of these kind of things. And I bought it over there. And I can tell you the quality is just not there. So I'm going to hold this down for a minute. This Fabri-Tac is fast. I mean, I actually use Fabri-Fix. This is actually Fabri-Fix. But I believe it's exactly the same as Fabri-Tac. I actually cannot find the Fabri-Fix anymore, anywhere. Gosh, it's not holding. I probably am going to have to put this on with hot glue, but I don't have my glue gun plugged in, so I, I can fix it later. I can just get it to hold enough so I don't lose the piece. <laughs> so I don't go hunting all over when it was right in front of my face. Okay, um, let me... This is, again, too white for me. Just too, too white. I love to get a little ink on there. Takes put some age on this puppy. As if it was sitting in someone's drawer or next to their sewing machine. It's a little sample of all the goodies from a dress they made. So, um, I wanted to have a little, a little age on it. Okay, that one's done. Let's move on to this one. I gotta move it, ladies. Time is moving. I don't want this to be too long because I have to tell you, my first two videos took... Well, the first video was quick because it was like eight minutes. But, sorry, looking for the right side here. That second video, which was an hour long, oh my goodness, it took forever to load. And I have an older phone. I'm actually getting a new one. It just couldn't handle it. It did not like it. Put it on my iPad. It wasn't happy. So, I want to make sure I don't get these videos too long. I want to keep you here forever, although I always have lots to say. I love this. Here we go. We're going to use this heart now. Isn't it beautiful, beautiful, beautiful heart? Now, I'm seeing shadows, ladies. We'll see how this films. Hopefully, there aren't too many. Nothing I can do about it, though, because the, the light comes off to my side over here. So, I'm not sure how else I would do it. I tried doing it late in the day. Oh, that was awful. It whited the whole thing out. Couldn't even see what I was making. Couldn't even see that. Everything was just white. Just white straight across. And I, oh man. I was heartbroken. That was a really cute video. I thought it was cute. <sighs> Had a lot to say. Lots of fun stories. But, you know, it is what it is. This is fun too, so I'm just as happy. I love being here with all of you. Thank you for coming on by and checking out my my studio and, and looking to see what I'm doing here and subscribing and getting notifications so you can find me. Because I don't know how often I'll be doing these, but there's a good chance you'll see a couple a week. As time goes on, there'll be more, as time permits, as health permits. I do suffer from debilitating migraines. I've had them. I started with headaches at 10. They became migraines at 12. I've had them ever since. They went away for a while, but they're back again. As I've gotten older, they said they would get better. They lied. They can last as long as 14 days. Eight, 14 only once in my whole life. A few years ago, thought I was going to die. Wanted to. Uh, eight days is the most recent. They can be two to three. And then there's always the hangover you get after from the medication and the migraine itself. It just messes with you so bad. And once when I was 22, I had a migraine so bad, I actually had a stroke, a right side stroke. And I worked very hard to overcome that. And you wouldn't know it unless I'm tired and then you can tell. But other than that, I didn't say that for sympathy. Uh, I have been through a million tests and seen number of neurologists. I even had a, what they call a heart bubble test. That was the scariest thing in the world where they put air in your heart. <laughs> Controlled to see if you have a leaker. Oh my goodness. Don't ever do that, ladies. That was the scariest thing. It didn't feel good either. I will tell you that. So I'm not going to tell you all my trauma and drama, but I am telling you that because it does keep me from doing a daily video. 
unfortunately. There's several times a month where I just have nothing to say about it. Sometimes it's the weather, sometimes it's stress, sometimes it's food, and sometimes we just, I have no idea. I do have constricted blood vessels at the base of my skull, which they think is the biggest contributor to that. And arthritis, you know, from an accident when I was young. So I'm just stuck with them. There's nothing I can do. Been there, done that. Done acupuncture and vitamins and oh my goodness, I did it all. kind of given up on on uh, trying to figure it out alrighty so there we go those will be I think a really lovely little addition to this journal I mean isn't that cute oh my gosh I love it I was trying to get colors that would complement the coffee dyed paper here so um, I think that looks good those will be cute in there and it's okay because it's a very soft cover I think it's going to, kind of a little, like a seamstress journal. It's got some really cute pages in it. I'll let you know when it's up for sale. If I sell it, I love it so much. It's going to be really, really hard for me to part with this one, ladies. Okay, I also wanted to share with you a little bit of ephemera. Oh, this is my pile of scraps that I was going to use to make some more of these. But I'm not going to do any more today. Those are going bye-bye. Okay, so these are some of the things I have made for this little uh, Dreams Etc. journal. It's not just her paper, so I do have um, antique papery in there, and I also have some jewel design and some others, so, you know, but it's mainly Dreams Etc. I have to say her papers are so stunning. Jen Bishop is the queen of these larger digitals. Oh, my goodness. Um so she just does phenomenal work. I don't know Jen. She is a friend of Gail's, but I love her work. I buy her work. You can find her at dreamsetc.com. She is not on Etsy. So I don't have links for you yet, ladies. I haven't figured, maybe gentlemen too. I have not figured out how to do that. So when I do, I will link. But So I'll just have to tell you, dreamsetc.com. Go try her over there. So we, I made that one. I made this adorable little pocket flip up this will get a pretty paper clip and then you have this little flip up and you have writing space up here you have these cute little things you have writing space there you have writing space here look at this isn't this adorable I honestly can't remember who did these um hmm Uh, might be Wendy, Wendy at Wendy's Journaling Adventure. I'm not Wendy's Journal Adventures. I'm not positive. It could be Wendy. Could be Crafty Cat. Oh gosh, guys, I'm sorry. I don't remember. Um, I made this a little bit ago with her during the video, so I can't remember. I'm sorry, ladies. Um, but I've mentioned both of you, so it was either one of you. You can let me know in the comments, or you can maybe they'll find you. <laughs> So I would like to tell them to wear, go watch the video. But anyway, it's adorable. Isn't this darling? I made quite a few, put one in my idea book. So there's that one. I have a nice, the double pockets here that are going to go on a page. And this is all the ephemera for the double pockets. So we have that. This is, this one's Gail. Uh, this is her faux envelope. I know this is Gail's. Um, so she had more things added. This is the simpler version that I saw on um, Shabby Dabby Doodah by Tina. She did a simpler version of that with the envelope on the back and a little uh, journaling card. This is a vintage envelope, very old. <clears throat> and so you just, and then you have your little journaling cards and you have your little pockets right here that allow you to put in a couple of other cutie little things. So that's going to go in there. This paper is antique papery. And then I have this beautiful little bag. And aren't these lovely? I don't remember who made these the first time. Could have been Wendy. It might have been Amy. I'm not really sure. But again, um, I, like I said, I watched so many videos that it could be anybody. So, alrighty, there we go. So those are a few of the things that are going in that journal. 
And I think I'm going to wrap it up here. It's been about 45 minutes. I do have some more to show you, so watch for my next video. It should be right along after this one in the next day or so. I want to thank you for stopping by and crafting with me today and for a little bit of chat. And I hope to see you all very soon. Stay well. Stay safe. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.